So, to make your iPhone louder, go to Settings, Music, and find the equalizer. It's called EQ in the menu. The late night option will make your phone around 20% louder than it used to be. If you deal with signing many documents, this hack can help you sign them without printing or scanning. Take a snapshot of the document, then tap the screenshot to make edits. Tap the plus button in the right lower corner. Choose the signature button in the toolbar, and here we go! Sign your document with your finger and save the changes by pressing Done. And I'm done. To record a video without being noticed, go to Camera, start recording. Then go back to the Notification Center. The video will be recording, but it won't be seen on the screen. Well, that's sneaky. You can also create a unique vibration for any of your contacts. Go to Settings, then Sounds, and open the ringtone settings. iPhones are usually set to a default vibration, but you'll see the Custom section if you scroll down a bit. Tap any rhythm that you like and save it. You can save it for any of your contacts. <laughs> It'd be even cooler if you could make the actual person vibrate, but maybe that's a future update. If customized vibration isn't enough and you still miss your Aunt Tilda's calls, try to customize the flash. Turn it on as an additional notification for incoming calls. Go to General Settings, choose the Accessibility section, and head to Hearing. Turn on the LED flash for alerts. You'll never miss that call again. I know you must have dozens of tabs open in your browser, or maybe a hundred. To close them all in one touch, hold the Done button in the left lower corner and choose the Close All X tabs. I closed 242 last time. If you accidentally closed all the tabs and need to go back to some of the recent ones, hold the Plus button in the middle. It will open the list of recently closed tabs, so all you gotta do is scroll down to find the one you didn't want to close. Whenever you need to choose more than one icon, tap and hold one icon, and with another finger, add all the other icons that you need. Now this won't work if you have an iPhone 6 or older. The newest iPhones have a super convenient feature that helps you go from one application to another. Look at that line on the bottom of the screen. Slide left or right and find the app that you need. No more double-clicking and notification center. Your iPhone timer is much more useful than it seems. If you like falling asleep to your favorite music or to a YouTube video as I do, go to clock, tap the timer, and select the when the time ends section. Scroll down until you see the stop playing button. This feature shuts down all the media apps, such as music, windows that play sounds or videos, and even the YouTube app. Pretty handy if you've ever woken up at 3 a.m. in the middle of some random video that auto-played. We're all used to messengers, but iMessages are fun! Press the send button to add different wow effects to your message. The bubble section has four features. Invisible ink makes it impossible to read the message unless you wipe it with a finger. Slide the finger from right to left, back and forth to clear them. With the gentle effect, the letters seem to really tiny at the start, but they grow larger. The loud effect is the opposite. It makes the messages pop at the start, so they appear way larger, but the size goes back to normal in a few seconds. The slam effect speaks for itself. The message literally slams the screen. The screen effects button is fun too. For example, it has echo, so your friend's screen will be overwhelmed with echoing texts. Slide right for more, such as spotlight, balloons, confetti, love, lasers, fireworks, shooting star, and even celebration. There are many different effects, so there's definitely one for the touching text you're about to send. Hold the space button in the notes. This way, you can easily slide across the keyboard to get to any part of the text. If you like typing with one hand only, it's high time you set the right keyboard. While typing, hold the globe button. You probably never noticed these three keyboards before, but in fact, the one on the left is used when you type holding your phone in the left hand only. The one in the middle is if you hold it with both hands, and the one on the right is if you type holding the phone in your right hand. If you like writing long, romantic letters in your notes, 
but don't want anyone to read them, except the person, you know. Set a pass to your notes. There are two ways to do that, depending on what iPhone model you have. For iPhone 6, slide from right to left, and you'll see three icons, lock, folder, and bin. Use the bin if the romantic letter is terrible and the lock to protect it from peeking eyes. Set the pass, but make sure you actually remember it since you can't delete it. If this didn't work, just tap and hold the note itself, and you'll see the password bar in the drop menu. Set the pass, and from now on, nobody will know about the romantic letters to Jane that you're writing at night. The newest models of iPhone support the coolest feature ever. Now you can make a screenshot of the whole browser page in one file. To do this, press the volume up button at the same time as the power button. If you need to find a unique word combination while reading an online article, go to the search bar and type the word you're interested in. You'll see three sections – Google search – don't need it, bookmarks and history – don't need it, and on this page. Tap here. The word you need is going to be highlighted in yellow. Plus, there will be a special navigation bar on the bottom with arrows to quickly find the keyword. Now, don't forget to refresh your iPhone operative memory every now and again. It can help your device work better and faster. To do so, go to Settings, General, Accessibility, Assistive Touch, and turn it on. Press plus, then minus, and then the power button. You'll see the power off bar. Press the assistive touch and hold the home button. The operative memory is refreshed now. If you see the enter pass notification after you did it, it means you did it right. Give yourself a pat on the back. Assistive touch can also help you set new functions to simple tabs. Go to settings, general, accessibility, and in the assistive touch section, you can change any commands in the custom actions menu. I chose the screenshot for a double tab, since a home plus power button seems a bit inconvenient. To make a screenshot, tap the accessibility menu circle twice. The iPhone font has different sizes. To make it bigger or smaller, go to the display and brightness section in settings. Tap the text size and adjust it the way you like. iPhones may not have the most durable batteries, but they beat everyone when it comes to photo quality. Turn on the grid in the camera settings, go to general, choose camera, to enable the grid that can help you make better compositions. By the way, people with iPhones don't need a separate app for QR readers, since all iPhones have them built in. Turn on the camera and point to the code. You'll see the pop-up window on top of the screen. Tap the window and you'll go straight to the browser to whatever link the QR code had. If it doesn't work, enable the scan QR codes function in camera settings. You can actually set any song you like for the alarm clock. Go to Alarm and press Edit in the right upper corner. Tap the alarm where you want to change the melody. In the Sound section, choose Pick a Song and go for any song added to your library. Disclaimer: Your best loved song will probably turn into your most hated song a couple of days after setting it for your alarm. One of the most hated problems of all iPhone users is when you run out of memory. Even if you delete photos, there's still not enough space. Go to Settings, iPhone Storage, and make sure that recently deleted photos are actually deleted. If not, delete them in the storage sections. Note that your messages can contain massive files too, so you can restrict how long the message can be stored. In the message history, tap the Keep Messages button. It's forever by default, but you can keep them for one year or even only 30 days. Have fun with that! iPhones. We all love them, and we can't live without them. But did you know, there are a lot of features that seem as though they're hidden in plain sight. Let's find out how you can use your iPhone to the max. First, the newest iPhones have this line at the bottom of the screen. It's for you to have multiple apps running. And if you need to quickly switch, just slide left or right on it and find the app you need. Here's an easy trick. You can take a screenshot on your iPhone by just tapping twice with your finger on the back of the phone. First, open up Settings, then go to Accessibility, Touch. 
Back Tap. You can apply it for various options, such as a screenshot, mute, home, lock screen, and many others. And you can choose from the same range of options to apply to your triple tap too. Let's test it out. Nice. Speaking of screenshots, have you ever been annoyed trying to scroll and screenshot long web pages? Well now you can get it all with only one press. Take a screenshot of a web page as usual, and when you see a page icon in the lower left corner, tap it. Switch from screen to full page mode, tab done, and now you can save the PDF to files. And here's a quick tip for taking more professional photos. You can go to settings, then camera, then grid, to enable a grid that will appear when you take a photo. It can help you center your photos for a better composition. By the way, your camera roll doesn't just store your lovely photos. Tap select in the right upper corner, and then tap any photo you need. In the lower left corner, you'll see a square with an arrow. Go for it. Scroll down and see what you can do. Add it to an album, duplicate it, or even hide it from prying eyes. Now, what if you're more into videos? You can massively improve your video quality with these simple steps. Go to Settings, Camera, Formats. Choose High Efficiency Camera Capture. Then go back to the menu, Record Video, and select 1080, 60 frames per second, or whichever setting you prefer. What about music? To make your music sound better, go to Settings, Music, EQ, and select Late Night. Now you don't need those pricey headphones with noise cancellation. But of course, try out all the other settings too to see which one you like best. Here's a way to make your note drawings nice and smooth even if you don't have a stylus. As you finish your drawing, don't lift your finger yet and instead hold it for a second. The iPhone will automatically straighten those edges out. We live in a multilingual world, but translation apps can be a bit clunky for chatting with foreign friends. Well, not anymore. The new conversation mode in Translate can split the screen into two parts, detecting the language that's being spoken on one side of the screen and translating it to the other side. Eleven languages are supported in total. And yeah, it perfectly works offline, so your conversations are sure to stay completely private. Speaking of communication, here's a couple nice tips for your message app. First, you can make a shortcut for your email to save time typing it. Go to Settings, General, Keyboard, and then select Text Replacement. Tap the plus button and type your email. Make any shortcut, two question marks for example, and you're good to go. Notice you can make these kinds of shortcuts for any long phrase you want. Very efficient. But what if you're using foreign words and you want to be accurate with your spelling? Many letters have those hidden symbols that you're looking for. If you hold your finger on a letter, you'll see them. Now you can type in any exotic language, respecting all the characters. Let's say that you're in the middle of writing a long essay of a message, but accidentally delete the whole thing. What do you do? It's easy. Just shake your phone, and it'll activate the undo typing function. Now, if you want to protect your privacy, this one is for you. Let's go to Settings, Privacy, Location Services, scroll down, tap System Services, and choose Significant Locations. Normally it's set to On, which means your phone knows not only where you live, but also where you work, where your favorite supermarket is, and other places you visit frequently. If that makes you feel uncomfortable, just turn it off. There may be really few viruses for iPhones, but you're never fully protected from juice jacking. If you don't want to be the one whose data is accidentally leaked, public chargers are a no-go. Airport, cafe, public transport, None of them are 100% safe, especially a USB charger. Good old adapter won't ever let you down. One of the most frequent problems of all iPhone users is when you run out of memory. Sometimes, even if you delete the photos, there's still not enough space. Go to Settings, General, then iPhone Storage, and make sure that recently deleted photos are actually deleted. If not, press on Photos, and then Empty. The other most common problem we all face is battery life. External battery all the time, here's a few simple suggestions to extend your iPhone's battery. First, to state the obvious, turn off background apps. When you open an app up but then swipe away from it, it's still running in the background, draining battery power. While you're on your home screen, 
Just swipe up from the bottom and hold for a second like this. Then swipe each app up to turn it off completely. Another major source of battery drain is widgets, since they're always running as long as you have them activated. Reducing the number of passive widgets you're running can help extend your battery. Obviously, playing sounds uses up your iPhone's power, but even when you're on silent mode and vibration is on, the vibration setting can still drain quite a bit. You can go to settings, then sounds and haptics, to change the sound and vibration settings. For maximum longevity, put your phone on you can also disable your hotspot, unless you're sharing cellular data. Wi-Fi doesn't have to be on 24-7 either. When it's active, your phone is constantly searching for hotspots to connect to. And you can keep your Bluetooth off whenever you aren't using a wireless headset. There's actually a menu you can go to to get a more accurate view of your phone's battery. Go to Settings, then Battery, and you can see a full breakdown of your phone's power usage and which apps are using the most. Here's also where you can activate low power mode for those extreme cases when you just need to make that last 5% really count. Now we're living in the future. I hope you enjoyed these tips and found them useful. Thanks for watching. If you look at it on the street, you'll think a fire hydrant is about three feet in height, but the actual size of the device used to provide water supply to firefighters all over the world is twice as large. That is if you count the rest of the hydrant, which is hiding underground. They're mostly red, and it's not just a matter of urban design. First of all, they need to be of bright, easily noticeable colors, so firefighters can spot them fast when they need to. The choice of color depends on how much water the hydrant can hold. It can sometimes vary depending on the location, but here's the breakdown. A red fire hydrant can splash 500 gallons of water per minute, while an orange one at least 1,000 gallons. Green ones mostly process 1,500 gallons of water per minute, and the most plentiful ones colored blue can generally contain over 1,500 gallons. Hey bowling fans, isn't it super annoying when your bowling ball gets cracked? Turns out that most of them get damaged because of incorrect storage or spikes in temperature. Now come on and face it, since it's already cracked a bit, aren't you curious what's actually inside the bowling ball? Cause I sure am. Let's have a look. They mostly make the inner core of the ball of powdered metal oxides, like calcium or iron oxide. They mix them with some resin and catalyst to harden the whole mixture. So that light bulb shape you now see inside of the ball is actually its heaviest part. It also influences how your bowling ball rotates when going down the lane. The same goes with spray paint cans. When you shake it, it makes a weird noise. But what is that thing in there? It's called a pea and it's meant to hold the paint mixture in place and maintain its shape. They generally make it out of plastic, metal, or ceramic. It basically acts as a whisk to make sure your paint is well mixed together before you apply it to your surface of choice. Ever wondered how soda bottles keep that refreshing fizz for that long? Well, they have a little plastic ring fastened to the lid. They place it there to keep the gas from escaping and making the soda go flat, even if you shake it around in your bag the whole day. Speaking of things we use on a hot summer's day, wait, wait, don't put your baseball cap on just yet. Take a look at it for a minute, and you'll notice there's a small button on the very top. Is it functional, or is it just there for the sake of design? Way back when people started using fabrics to cover their heads, some say the button was actually functional. Since it's on top of the cap where the fabric panels come together, the top button helps keep the cap crown in one single piece. Now, with recent advances in fabric and pattern design, the button is more of an aesthetic feature. It's used to cover up the joint point of the fabric panels. Your cap might not have a button at all, but don't you think a cap actually looks better with one? Cotton pads have two sides, and if you take the time to look at them carefully, they're actually different in texture. Just in case you've ever wondered why, the textured side is for applying makeup, and the even side is for removing it. Bookworms, this one is for you. Dust jackets that come with a lot of hardcover books are not just meant to make your book look pretty, they also double as a bookmark. Just fold the pages you've already read underneath the inside of the jacket, and voila! Next time you reach out for your favorite shirt, take a look at the top buttonhole. It should be stitched horizontally, and all the other ones are vertical. Turns out that the dress shirt was designed this way, since the first and the last buttons were the first ones to unbutton throughout the day. They then changed the direction of the buttonhole to ensure the shirt would stay nice and fitted before you're ready to take it off. 
These days, we have so many variations of this awesome dessert that it's hard to imagine we've ever lived without it. You can find different types of cookie dough ice cream or even chocolate chip cookie cake basically everywhere. But the famous cookie wasn't actually invented until 1930. The story goes that a woman named Ruth Graves Wakefield was preparing some chocolate cookies as she was waiting for some guests to arrive. She soon figured out she was out of baker's chocolate, a crucial ingredient for the classic cookies. To fix things up, she chopped up a block of semi-sweet chocolate, thinking it would eventually spread out evenly throughout the batter, given the heat of the oven. Things didn't necessarily go as planned. But hey, it's great they didn't because this is how she invented this modern dessert we now can't get enough of. And speaking of popular snacks, the potato chip is even younger than the chocolate chip cookie. Well, at least historically. There are many stories trying to explain how it was invented. One of them goes like this. A chef named George Crum, based in New York, put the chips together in 1953. He decided to try a different cooking solution when one of his customers didn't have nice things to say about his french fries. He said they were too thick and kind of mushy. Then, Crum came up with potatoes that were thinly sliced and fried until brown. People absolutely loved the dish, and they welcomed the first ever batch of chips with open arms. Ice cream, anyone? If the story is true, back in 1904 at the St. Louis World's Fair, one ice cream shop owner ran out of cups to serve his dish. So, he fashioned a waffle into the shape of a cone, and the rest was history. Okay, I'll admit it, chewing gum-like treats have been around since the ancient Greeks. So this one isn't particularly a revolutionary discovery, but the actual gum we buy today wasn't there until the late 1800s. An American inventor named Thomas Adams wanted to mix together different chemicals to create rubber. He tried and failed, for that matter, to play with chicle for his experiment, but ended up fashioning this neat treat. They still use chicle to this day to produce most chewing gums. Back in the 1800s, there lived a man named Jean-Baptiste Joly, who worked in the fabric industry as a textile maker. How he came up with this next invention that we use a lot these days has less to do with him and more to do with his maid. The story goes that the woman accidentally knocked a kerosene lamp over onto a tablecloth. Instead of getting upset over the damaged fabric, Jolly noticed that the substance actually made the material cleaner. Figured it out yet? Yep, that's how the idea for the very first dry cleaner popped up. A very neat accident, if I do say so myself. Now this one I loved. Did you know matchsticks were initially called friction lights? Or at least that's how their inventor, a chemist named John Walker, called them back in 1826. He scraped a stick coated in chemicals across his hearth, totally by accident one day, and realized that they ignited and created a spark. Initially made out of cardboard, they were then made using wooden splints and sandpaper. Back in the 1940s, a man named Harry Coover stumbled upon a chemical formulation that seemed to stick to everything it touched. The scientific community at the time didn't look much into it as the formula didn't seem to have many applications back then. It wasn't until 1951 that he looked a bit more into the formula and decided to repurpose it. Along with a fellow Eastman Kodak researcher named Fred Joyner, they gave it a proper full name. But you must know it by the shorter version, Super Glue. It also has many uses in security these days that it's hard to believe that we didn't come up with this one on purpose. Back in 1903, a scientist named Edward Benedictus knocked over a flask by accident. He looked down and was amazed to see that the glassware had just slightly cracked but maintained its shape. He was expecting it to break into a million tiny pieces. Curious about this hidden feature, he looked into it and figured out what was keeping the glass together was a substance coating the inside of the glass. Ta-da! That's how humanity came up with safety glass.